This is an update on the how to calibrate your Puma X device for Windows. The easiest way to get into the Game Controller tab is to use the Window key to start a search, then type USB and you should see the Setup USB Game Controllers. You might have to, to type Setup first and then USB or you could also type game controller all leads to the same you just need to select setup USB game controller once you're there you can make sure to select the PFT Puma uh, for the fifth generation Puma X then hit properties and you should see the PFT Puma property windows that shows you the test tab with all the buttons the hats or POVs and then all the axes. If you own a single engine Puma X you won't see as many axes. Uh, you only see one of the two Y or Z rotation. If you own a twin engine then you'll see both. Same goes for the pedals. If you don't own toe brakes you won't see the dial and slider axes moving if you have the toe brake modification installed and the twin engine as we do in uh, our sample demo video here then you'll see all eight axes uh, moving to calibrate the unit select settings and then select uh, calibrate and the game device calibration wizard starts click next it asks you to leave the control centered um, no need to be super mega accurate on the centering. What I usually do is I go left, right, and I simply look down at the control and make sure they are roughly centered. And I'm same for forward, backwards. We don't have a spring on our cyclic, so it doesn't matter if the cyclic is not perfectly calibrated, uh, centered. Uh, it won't have an effect on uh, how you fly then in the flight simulator. Then click next we usually advise to activate the raw data so that you actually see uh, numbers these numbers are the actually actual raw data sent to the computer um, you might notice uh, the cross wiggling at the beginning or some percentage numbers and things you can ignore all of that all that's really necessary is the raw data value. If I uh, start with cyclic, all I want to do is go backward right, backwards left. You might have to move your legs because you need extra space for calibration and forward, backward, do the same. What you want to try to do if you have, uh, if you don't have the gap piece installed, you don't want to enter the gap with a cyclic, otherwise it would screw up your calibration uh, values. So just use the back part and each corner to go to the maximum of each ranges. And you can see the raw data is moving uh, up and down, up and down, etc. When you don't touch the controls, you might see like up to five uh, point of fluctuation. That's absolutely normal. What you shouldn't see when you leave the control is the data all of a sudden jumping uh, values by the hundreds or uh, continually moving down or totally different number if each time you calibrate, etc. You can see the data is pretty stable. It's very, very, very sensitive. You can see as soon as I even put my finger on the control without even moving, you'll see the number changing because it's extremely sensitive and precise um, controls. Then we go to uh, next. It again requests us to center the control to verify that it's centered. That's fine. We can leave it that way. Click next. Z axis would be the collective. So I'll simply go up, wait for two seconds, go down, wait for two seconds, same up, same down. And again here you could see that the percentage is like over 500% and the graphic bar doesn't move. That could be quite irritating. 
but don't worry about that. All you have to focus on is the raw data that now moves from roughly 32,000 points to 26,000 points, so 6,000 position within those few centimeter uh, of movement. And there you can see the accuracy, uh, incredible accuracy of the controls. Good, that's it for the collective. Next is the X rotation. There I simply go forward right, wait for two seconds, forward wait, two seconds, forward right, two seconds, forward left, two seconds, and back to center. Good for pedals. Next would be the Y rotation. On a twin engine device, there would be uh, the four throttle, fully open, wait for two seconds, fully closed, wait for two seconds. Next, same for the after engine, fully open, fully close, and I usually wait like two seconds between position just to give uh, the calibration value the time to, to settle. Next, uh, if you don't have the toe brakes, again, you will need to calibrate uh, the dial and slider axis. With the toe brake installed, first you'll do the right brake for the dial, and then left brake for the slider axis. Perfect. Then finish. That brings us back to the PFT, PFT uh, Puma property window. And if we take a closer look at the data here when uh, moving the axis, needs to be activated, sorry. You can see that the bar now after calibration will uh, show the full range. The cross is more or less centered, and again, it doesn't have to be 100% perfectly centered. Both throttle axes work fine, the toe brakes are there, everything looks good. We can also do some zone testing. In the middle zone, the POV would show black arrows, red arrows for the low zone, and blue arrows for the up zone. Everything's looking good and we're good to go. Uh, the Windows calibration is finished and uh, you have a perfectly calibrated device. You can now proceed into the simulation software to further configure your controls.